Hey everybody, it's Cherry. Hey, I just want to spend just um, a few minutes with you. Nothing big and, and detailed, but I want to talk about insulin. Insulin's a big deal with our diabetic patients and what makes it such a big deal? We're going to spend a little time with this. Now, my computer's being a little slow, so if I feel sound like I'm mentally challenged here, um, we're going to blame it on my computer, okay? All right, so insulin is produced by your pancreas, okay? In a normal, healthy person, and, our, and it's produced when our blood sugar gets a little high, our pancreas produces insulin. When our blood sugar gets a little low, it slows down. Okay, and it's an automatic thing that we never have to worry about until we're diagnosed or until we um, get diabetes. And that's when our pancreas stops doing its job. So a diabetic's pancreas produces either not enough insulin or maybe none at all. Okay. Now we know from our pathophysiology studies um, that our cells require oxygen and nutrients, which in most cases glucose, to produce energy. Their job is to produce energy enough to do their job. So if it's cardiac muscle, they're producing energy to contract. Um, different muscles have different jobs, but they all require oxygen and glucose. We also know from pathophysiology that our vessels are in charge of transporting both of those things to our cell, okay? So we know what we need, we know how it gets there, okay? Now here's the problem. Our digestive tract breaks down the food that we eat into glucose and it puts it into our bloodstream and it just sort of floats around in the plasma there, okay? And so you can see from this picture over here, normal blood glucose, it's got some sugar in it, okay? High blood glucose level has got a whole bunch of sugar in it, okay? Now, once we get all this sugar to the cell and we move it over here, that, the oxygen can move across the cell wall because it's a gas. It, it moves through things much easier. Those sugar molecules are different. They're hard, they're crystals. They don't just move through the cell wall. And so the glucose has to have a key to get through that cell wall. Or it can't get in the cell, in which case the cell can't use it. Okay. Insulin is that key. Okay. Now there's a receptor in each cell wall that the insulin fits in. So if you can picture it as sort of a lock, the insulin is the key. It goes in, unlocks it, and opens the door for the glucose to travel through, okay? So as long as the sugar's there, the insulin can open the door and let it in, okay? However, if the sugar's there and we don't have the insulin, then the sugar is just going to hang out where it is because it can't get where it needs to be. So, you know, it, it's kind of okay with that. It just hangs out in the bloodstream the problem with that is the cell is now lacking the fuel that it needs to do its job. So we're going to start to have cells that malfunction. Like I said before, we're going to see that in the brain first. Okay, so keep in mind here, this says insulin allows the cells to receive sugar when the sugar is in the blood. So we have to have eaten enough to have blood sugar in the in the blood, okay? And this is, a, this is a problem for diabetics. Not a problem for me, but for some, okay? So when we check a blood sugar, what we're checking is how much sugar is in the blood. We are not checking how much sugar is in the cell, okay? So we're simply trying to identify with our diabetic patients, do they have an adequate amount of sugar? Because if they don't, then we know that they need to eat. If they do, then we know um, the sugar's there. So if my cells are malfunctioning, it's gotta be because the key is missing. Okay, make sense? That's as hard as this gets, guys. So if we don't have enough insulin, the sugar's simply going to hang out 
in the bloodstream. Okay, and so it's going to start like this, a normal blood glucose, but as, as the, you know, we keep eating and we don't have the insulin supply there, we're going to end up with a patient that has an unusually high blood glucose. Now that does a couple things, okay? It's really hard on the vessel system. Um, it makes the blood a little thicker, okay? Um, it can in and of itself cause um, a lot of damage to our nervous system and things like that if it consists on a relatively regular basis, okay? But we call this condition where there's lots of blood glucose in the blood. So there's lots of sugar in the blood. We call that hyperglycemia. And we know that hyper always refers to too much of. Glycemia refers to glucose. So hyperglycemia is too much glucose in the blood. Okay. Now, we have, to, we have to analyze what are we looking at here. Okay, so we're looking at blood glucose levels. We're not looking in the cell at this point. If I can get this dumb thing to move, we'll be on our merry way here. I'm so sorry. Okay, so let's look at the flip side of this. If there is too much insulin, remember that insulin is the key. It's going to run around and open all of those cell doors the blood glucose is going to go rushing in there and what we are left with is little or no sugar in the blood for the future and the future might be 10 minutes or three minutes or an hour and all of a sudden our patient is showing signs and symptoms of being confused agitated um, combative or unconscious because they don't have adequate amount of sugar now to feed those cells so it's kind of like binge eating. You eat it all, and then there's no room for anything later, okay? All right, and that's going to give us a state if we have too much insulin. And let's say, let's say this diabetic patient gave themselves an injection of insulin, and they gave too much, okay? It's going to open up too many cells. All the sugar's going to go rushing in and get burned up, and now we're left with nothing. And that's going to put our patient in trouble. And we call that hypoglycemia, low blood sugar. Okay. So we can have hypoglycemia, not enough sugar. We can have normal levels, which is what um, healthy people have on a, on a consistent basis. And we can have hyperglycemia, too high of blood sugar. Both of all of these depend on how much calories we're taking in and how much our cells are using. So insulin is the key. Diabetic patients don't have enough of that. We've established that. So they depend on insulin injections and calorie regulation. They have to count their carbs to keep the sugar levels normal and to make sure their cells are functioning. Okay. That sounds easy. Okay, It's not. So they have to balance how much they eat with how much they need. And they have to do that consistently throughout the day. They can't eat too much or they get too much blood sugar. They can't eat too little or they don't have enough sugar for their cells. Okay. They're in, they also have to constantly balance the amount of insulin needed by the cells. This is going to depend on how much insulin their pancreas is producing so some diabetics can regulate their calorie intake and make it work with the amount of insulin their pancreas is producing. Other diabetics, typically type 1 diabetics, have to rely on insulin injections because their body doesn't produce any. So that makes it harder um, because now they're trying to balance what they eat with how much they're burning with how much insulin they need. Okay, so take take a let's take a small child okay three-year-old he's got to take in enough calories and enough insulin but not too much or too little of any and that's going to vary because one day he's sitting in front of the tv watching cartoons not burning any calories and the next hour 
he's outside playing football with the neighbor kids and burning up all of his sugar really quickly. Or he gets sick and he's running a fever and burning up tons of energy um, to create that fever. So that becomes really difficult. So that balance has to happen constantly every single day and not every day, but every hour and every minute of every day. So, you know, we get sometimes a little um, lackadaisy with our diabetic patients and we don't really understand what they do. And they are truly heroes because what they're doing to keep themselves healthy and simply to stay alive is pretty amazing. Okay. It all goes back to the insulin. So I hope this helps you understand, gives you a little grasp on what insulin does and why it's so important. Okay. Glad you popped in. Subscribe to my channel if you want more videos and have an awesome day.